All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott of Blackhawk Technical College. I'm going to begin now a series of lectures on the actual chapters from our textbook, which is Come on, there we go. Starting out with Java, let's cut it down like that. Starting out with Java from Control Structures Through Objects, 6th edition by Tony Geddes. Again, that's the book that we're going to be going over this semester. And as you can see, if you take a look on here, let me get this a little bigger. There are 17 chapters in the book. Well, you may be that good, but I can't cover a chapter a week and give homework. So probably we're going to do approximately the first nine chapters in this class. If there's time, we'll do the first 10. All right, but it, it doesn't typically work out that way. I've already gone through the PowerPoint presentations for chapters 1 through 11. So those are already on my YouTube channel, and there <clears throat> is a link to them through Blackboard. But what I'm going to do is go over each chapter. But rather than spend a lot of time on the chapter material, all right, what I'm going to do is virtually for each chapter, I'm going to write a Java program so you can see what's going on. So again, the book teaches programming using Java, and it assumes you have little to no programming language experience. As the prereq for this class is 152.119, learning to program using or with JavaScript, my guess is that virtually all of you, and there may be one or two exceptions, but virtually all of you have taken that class, so you have some programming experience. I'm not going to try to convince you why to program. I'm not going to talk to you about hardware and about software. If you do want that information, I did go over that in the um, when I went over the PowerPoint lectures. We're writing software in here, and in particular, we're writing application software. All right. As mentioned here on the bottom of page 5, application software refers to programs that make a computer useful to the user. All right. Some application programs you use every day, things like Word, really the whole office suite, so Excel or Access. All right. But any, anything that has been created for you, basically, to make the computer easier to use that's not operating system related is application software. All right. A program is a set of instructions. That set of instructions is typically also known as an algorithm. Here are some of the major programming languages that are in use today. Now, in this program, we, go, we have a class in C. We have a class in C Sharp. We have two classes in Java. We have really two classes in JavaScript. We have a class in PHP. So we hit probably are the ones that they mentioned here, the 12 or so, about five or six. If you want a history of Java, you can, again, take a look at what uh, I've, I've put in there in the PowerPoints. It's just not my goal to go over that again right now. There's two types of Java programs that you can write, applications and applets. An application is a standalone program that runs on the computer. That's what we're going to do all of this semester and all of next semester except for one chapter when we will go through an applet. And an applet is designed to run under your browser. So we have a chapter on applets in the advanced class, but I'm not going to talk about it anymore until that time. All right. As far as the language elements in a program, in Chapter 1, we go over the Java keywords. They're also known as reserved words. We start to go over operators right away in, in Java. We go over punctuation right away. Any executable line in a Java program, with very few exceptions, must end with a semicolon. All right, we'll go over programmer uh, defined names, which are also called identifiers, and the rules for you creating those names in Java. We'll also talk about syntax, and syntax are the rules of the language. So here's a Java program. I don't expect you to look at this and have it make a lot of sense, because that's what this class is about. All right, you'll notice it says public class payroll. That name right there, including the caseness, with a capital P, whatever you say public class followed by, that's what you have to name your file as .java. Public means that this class can be called from both, uh, from basically any place. It can be called by the public, and it is a class. Java is a block-structured language, so everything you do goes within curly braces. 
every Java application, not applet, but application, must have a main method. The name of the method is main. It doesn't return anything, so it says void. It's public. It's static, which for right now, just think what that means is there's one of them. And it can take arguments. Those arguments go into a string array that's called args. We will talk about that, but much later in the semester. Java is a very strongly typed language, so when you create a, a variable, you have to let the system know what type it is. Int hours equal 40 means hours is a variable which can only hold a whole number, and in this case, it holds 40. <clears throat> I don't like the way the author writes this. I want all of your variables each on their own line. So we would say double gross pay, semicolon, double pay rate equal 25.0, semicolon. So what we are doing is we're creating two variables here, all right? One name gross pay, which we're not initializing. One name pay rate, which we are initializing. Then we say gross pay, the one right here, equals our hours times 40, which, I mean, which is 40 rather, times pay rate, which is 25. So what should print out on your screen is your gross pay is 1,000. All right, pretty simple, and we'll go over that example or one like it in just a couple minutes. Here's your Java keywords. So that's what, 45, 53 it looks like keywords that we have in Java. Some of them, such as <clears throat> go to, are never used actually in the language, but Java made them keywords so you wouldn't use them and develop bad programming habits. <clears throat> Again, we'll talk about programmer defined names, also known as identifiers. We'll talk about operators. I've already mentioned a little bit about punctuation. This book will show all their code examples and there will be line numbers. <clears throat> but when we create code, we do not ever put in line numbers. In fact, if you want your program to not work, put in line numbers. We're going to be working all semester with variables. What's a variable? It's a named memory location. All right. One of the things about Java is it uses something that's called the Java Virtual Machine. There's actually something similar in .NET land that's called the CLR, or the Common Language Runtime. The Java Virtual Machine is responsible when you compile a Java program, you compile it into what's called bytecode. <clears throat> and then what happens is, after the program has been compiled, the Java Virtual Machine, the JVM, takes that compiled bytecode, which is in a .class file, and it converts it into an executable file for you. Java is a portable language, meaning that quite often you can take the same Java program on one type of platform, recompile it on another, and run it with making no changes. They talk a little bit about the Java additions. I'm not going to go through that. We're using SE to my knowledge in here, probably SE8. Could be EE, but I think it's SE. For this compile and run a program, just skip this stuff right here because what they talk about here on page 14 is if you compile and run the program from the command line. We won't be doing that. But they do a nice explanation of it anyway here. All right. We're going to use an IDE or an integrated development environment, one that's different from what you're using in the C-sharp class. In here, we're going to use Eclipse. All right. And it'll look very similar to what you see in here. <clears throat> They break the programming process up into nine steps here. I'll let you look at those. The key thing is steps one, two, three, and four really do not have to involve using a computer. So these steps here. And typically, if you think about a problem, break it down without using the computer, all right, you're going you're gonna to write a much better product in the end. All right, then in step five, you key it into the computer, you test it, you correct any errors that you found, you keep testing and testing and correcting errors. So that's what they talk about on the next several pages. <clears throat> All right. They talk a little bit about software engineering. Again, if you want more of that, you can look at the PowerPoint presentations. Object-oriented programming. Java is a true object-oriented programming language. Everything you do in Java must be done in a class. C Sharp is also an object-oriented programming language. Last semester, we used Java, and we never really did anything in Java with objects, all right? 
or what let's put it this way what we did was very little java is an object oriented programming language as is c sharp javascript is an object based programming language which means it has object oriented features that you can use if you want to but you don't have to with an object oriented programming language you must use the features older languages are called procedural languages with a procedure the data and the operations on the data were typically distinct from one another with objects the data and the object or the data and the methods that operate on the on the data are together and what you put them together in is what's called an object and that's what the author tries showing here if that doesn't make a lot of sense don't worry about it because that's that's what the whole class is about so that's it for chapter one there's nothing in here that I thought was really worth going over as far as the programming challenges etc I'm not going to write this but what I'm going to do next before going on into chapter two is I'm going to stop the lecture right now but then I'm going to go into the virtual desktop and show you how to set up Eclipse and how to create a very simple Java program so I'll do that in just a second